Good morning and welcome to the virtual bridge session. Uh, this virtual bridge session um, is led uh, by two colleagues, Neil Weir and Ronnie Casement from West College Scotland. Um, it's a college that I as HMI have a lot of contact with and when you see strong practice that might be useful to the sector, it's important to take the opportunity to share that. I think our research and our evidence is growing that the challenge about younger learners, the challenge about learners with disadvantage, and the challenge about learners who are learning lower in the SCQF um, levels, it strikes every college, it strikes every institution, and strikes every country. Uh, so any ideas about how we could successfully engage, motivate, uh, and, and encourage success in uh, for those learners is going to be useful. Uh, so I'm going to hand over to, to Neil and Ronnie to explain their experience working with level four and level three learners and the things that worked for them that helped ensure retention and engagement. Over to you, Neil. Thank you very much, John. Um, and good morning, everybody. And hello to anybody that happens to be watching online at a later stage as well. Um, Ronnie and I are going to share the presentation and taking turn about to address different areas of it. Um, first of all, our intention, it's not to teach our granny to suck eggs in any way. So please forgive us if anybody's listening in and that is the case. Um, neither is our intention to deliver a treatise on pedagogical theory with a you know, hundred PowerPoint slides or so, but there'll be some anyway. And in fact, at this point, I'm actually gonna share my screen and open up the PowerPoint presentation. Hope you can all see that, yep. Um, what we're hoping to present is elements of the approach we've taken in the Learn and Development Department at West College Scotland and how we engage students in a curriculum that's traditionally, it's very practical in nature, what we do a lot of the time, but it's been adapted to online learning with what we would consider to be a high degree of success, I think. Um, and although we'll discuss the current situation and how it's been since March, you know, for the last 12 months, the principles and the practice of how we support and develop the students is the same, whether it's in a virtual or uh, a physical classroom. We have approximately 420 students on the full-time courses across the three different campuses for West College Scotland. Um, and our full-time classes, they range from level two to four, with the highest levels of activity around the, the levels three to four. We've got upwards of about 85% attendance in all groups, with several achieving 95% plus as well. And this is talking about an average across the week for each group rather than individual classes where there are occasional differences for various reasons. Um, retention so far has been very high and already we've got a large number of our current cohort of students have applied for a course next year, even with the knowledge that we may find ourselves in a similar situation to now at some point. And the progression from last year was high where recruitment figures in many of our areas of our section also matched um, previous years and in some classes actually exceeded previous years, which we find quite interesting knowing we were in the online situation. Um, to kind of put things in context, we were, we were quite lucky in March last year in that we had anticipated and discussed the, the, the pending lockdown around 10 days prior to the actual official date when it happened. And that allowed us to prepare students for online learning albeit with an expectation that it would possibly be a shorter period of time than it actually turned out to be, of course. Uh, the staff were able to work with the students and parents and carers to ensure they were able to use the chosen teaching platforms that would work best between Microsoft Teams and Zoom and to actually help to prepare the students mentally for all the challenges ahead. There was an opportunity to ensure that all the students' contacts were current and accessible to all relevant staff who would require them and that all students, carers, parents, and other parties had access to staff emails and if appropriate phone numbers, so we could keep that one-to-one -one contact going regularly as well. Before we actually finished up for the, 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 the lockdown during those 10, 10 days, the course teams all, they discussed, discussed the course content and where they could see opportunities to work together and share teaching or theme-based classes including cross-campus discussions and to see if there were opportunities to share materials, et cetera, to really kind of lighten the load of this new way of working. And since the, um, most, of the, most of the courses have adapted very quickly and did so within two weeks of starting in March. Um, 
there was some concern from course leaders that the students wouldn't be able to engage for various reasons. These were primary, primarily with the lower level courses and um, Ronnie will address a wee bit of that later. But since the start of this academic session began in September again this year, we've had a brief period when all of our full-time classes have had some time on campus, which allowed us to further um, develop them for the online learning with, and consideration was kind of given to the type of curriculum and subjects we'd be offering for this year as well at an early planning stage to take into account the fact that we assumed we probably would be in lockdown again and we knew we didn't, needed to be able to deal with assessment online. There were and there still are many challenges we face daily to our online learning and some of the which um, Ronnie is going to address for us at the moment. Uh, Ronnie, could you take over? Sure, no problem. Um, there's limited research and data available to date relating to the experience of students affected by learning barriers through the current COVID-19 pandemic. However, it would be fair to say that this population have been affected by an array of challenges in relation to the necessary changes imposed during the period between March 2020 until now. These challenges include um, technology as a challenge in terms of the availability of devices. Um, the College Chromebook Lending Scheme has been um, really helpful with this issues, but that in itself has actually thrown up some technical challenges as well because the Chromebooks have had to be set up for the students and that's been difficult too. Um, there's competing needs for devices within households. Sometimes there's multiple students in households, siblings. Um, sometimes there's um, you know, combinations of students and those working from home. Um, multiple, uh, multiple internet users are also placing great demand on the household internet limits. Um, and connection has been a, a sort of general issue I think we can all relate to. Um, students, uh, student support around accessing online classes has been a particular challenge. In some cases where the support, supporting adult does not have a, a working knowledge of email or on, the online class, classroom platforms, that's been particularly difficult. Um, the challenge around health vulnerabilities, um, the Learner Support Department has a diverse population of students with many affected by health issues, which means they're considered vulnerable. Many students affected by learning barriers have experienced various forms of exclusion in their lives, and so those with additional health vulnerabilities are, un are understandably sensitive about being left out. This has informed our inclusion theme across curricular planning. Support and accommodation challenges. Um, our student population also include many with a complex variety of support and accommodation needs, which are required in order to provide them with equity of opportunity in relation to accessing their rights to further education. These support needs are usually facilitated through a combination of personal support provided by a student support team and lecturing staff, and through the provision of a variety of general and individualised accommodations. There have been some specific challenges around the provision of effective supports and accommodation during the online period. There's also the challenges relating to personal, social and emotional development. Our student population contains students whose personal, emotional and social development is intrinsically connected to attending class, meeting college friends and engaging in active and independent student lives. Maintaining a sense of our student community has been central within our on, ongoing online curricular planning. So these conflicting issues have been key considerations in the design of the approach we've adopted when moving our courses online, in line with the COVID-19 government mandated response. I'll pass back to Neil now and let him give a wee bit more information about our de um, departmental approach. Thanks, Ronnie. So what has contributed to our success? Um, as a department, we've had various discussions to establish a consistent approach to delivery as members of staff teach across different courses and class groups and levels and campuses. So it was important that a common approach will allow for a kind of greater clarity in delivering classes rather than getting bogged down in technology and the processes of using technology, either for us or the as staff or the students. Um, there was a, this was kind of particularly true of the initial lockdown where every one of us in FE, of course, had to adapt very quickly and learn and you know, to use new new facilities and new systems and so on. Timetabling as follows the campus teaching slots, something like that, and any variations should be discussed and agreed with the course team leader and the course teams. Um, this approach has continued for this session where the timetable is exactly the same slots in the week where it would normally be if they were in the physical campus. Some of the kind of basic aspects that we first uh, 
kind of thought of when we were going into supporting our students both online and in a classroom of course was it's the first thing was to actually determine the best platform to use for our students now this has turned out to be a combination of some groups can operate better with them um, zoom other groups operate better with teams it was all dependent on who had time to work with the students initially to learn new facilities and what equipment they had at home as well for that matter zoom is proving it's proving to be very popular with our students largely I think it's easier than teams to use for a lot of students and parents who may have difficulties as well. We had to establish firm rules for the students and a protocol for classes, the same way as we have discipline in class, you know, in physical classes on campus, such things like the punctuality, um, no jammies and lying in your bed for classes, etc. Um, learning to use the, the mute button and so on and the, on the microphone so that we're not overhearing and you know, the, 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 the chat that can go on indiscriminately and so on, and raising your hand, simple processes and things that can establish the discipline and help our class to work more easily. We try to encourage the use of the camera and the microphone uh, with students as well, particularly with classes that are just starting for the first time, new, new intake classes where they haven't had a chance to build peer-to-peer -peer friendships and, and a class community and stuff. It, it strengthens that bond when you can actually see folks. And one of the important bits of that, of course, is look at the camera as well when you're you're talking, rather than looking at a screen, which becomes a bit more random. Obviously, with this presentation, when we're reading notes off and on, we have to kind of look at them into the bargain. But and a, a third thing was to actually make sure you've issued a timetable. The course tutors all made sure that the students were very aware of where and when classes were happening. Um, what's been working well? Lots of stuff, actually. Just some of the things that have worked particularly well for different reasons. Online ICT, enterprise photography, numeracy, drama, well-being, guidance, cookery. Each one of these things has been able to introduce new elements into the class and the way that they work in the class. And some of them have actually proven to have some really creative ideas that, that staff and students are both thinking like now, actually, this is a better way of working this than it was sitting in a classroom all together. And we'll be approaching some of those issues as we go through as well. A couple of examples of things that have worked particularly well. Our enterprise class um, with our step two, which is doing a fundraising Zoom quiz. And the classes have been organizing the delivery of fundraising online quizzes. So they've been asked to tasked with creating a five topic quiz, each having the, um, of 50 questions. And they're in teams, so each member will research and deliver their chosen topic to the invited Zoom participants. And each participant is asked to pledge a £5 donation to take part, and each team member is tasked with then inviting four to five participants into their quiz. The classes aren't allowed to use ready-made online quizzes that you could get from Kahoot, etc. Um, the reason being that they're asked to, to, to research for themselves and deliver all aspects of the quiz in order to actually develop the skills that we can see here. And out of that, from that one task, as we can see, there are a great number of um, skills that the students can develop. So often in a method, in a format where they couldn't do it in the classrooms quite so effectively, it's developing their independent learning as much as anything and more than anything in many ways. Um, Certain students at times, of course, will require the extra support at home. And that's an issue, an issue we'll, be, we'll, be, we'll be following up on as well. Um, one of the other areas that's been working particularly well is the digital photography classes, um, where they've set up a Twitter and a Facebook page where the students are all able to, you know, they've authoring rights to it, all of them, and they're able to download and upload for photography and share photography between themselves. Often there's a theme being adapted for the, the, the photography classes. At the moment, they're looking at using toys for um, taking photographs and stuff and putting them into nice creative situations. But lots and lots of um, great material is coming out of this one. And there's a lot of interest being generated at further afield and sharing of the, 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 the Twitter feeds, etc., which is great to see. Um, they're getting out and about as well, encouraging some fresh air and exercise for them. And some of the themes some weeks into the bargain, looking at different textures around their life and Lots and lots of different aspects to the photography again and different aspects to the learning. Some of the, some of the, the areas that they are 
developing further through this communication, ICT, aesthetic judgment, very important for students what come from a lot of the backgrounds of where they are deprived of many things in our students, um, even the chance to exercise outdoors. Often this is something that the students wouldn't engage in unless this is actually introduced into their curriculum. The emotional content, to be able to actually express themselves quite openly and freely and developing creative technical skills, teamwork, and actually just having fun, which is a great aspect of the learning for them into the bargain. Um, why is our current work learning, online learning working? I think there are lots and lots of um, aspects to this and I'm gonna sit in this slide for a wee bit and unfortunately talk. Um, there's no single item really that you could say is responsible. It's rather, it's a combination of many aspect, aspects, not least the commitment and the creativity of colleagues across all three campuses. Um, we've got an advantageous position where we're able to remove and introduce units into most of our courses as we don't generally follow group awards, although we do deliver elements of NPAs and we deliver the entire certificate of work readiness, which is our strict um, you know, and framework to follow. But during the first lockdown and planning for this year, we carefully considered what had worked since March 2020 and what hadn't worked. And as a team, we're confident that the subjects we're delivering this year are all suited to online learning and much had already been achieved with most of those subjects to develop them for this purpose. Since September, we've regularly discussed everyone being ready at short notice to move everything online at any time. So when that did happen for us, just end of November, beginning of December, everybody was prepared already and had materials and so on for that and students were prepared. We're in a really envious position where we've got uh, student support workers in, our, in each campus and they work exclusively with our students. On campus, they'll help during classes, acting as scribes were required, helping students to get logged onto computers. They've got a regular presence in the social areas of the college and they're a friendly face, well, most of them are a friendly face, who the students will approach at times in preference to talking to a lecturer. Each support worker follows a timetable of a given class usually, and this has remained so with online classes as well. So student support workers who would be in a physical class on campus will also join online now. Um, this has proven to be absolutely invaluable, invaluable and feedback from the parents and students has been highly positive regarding the support role that is offered uh, online. Lecturing staff, they use breakout rooms on both Teams and Zoom to allow students to work alone in a task while the lecturer works with a small group of students. A member of the support staff is usually present in the breakout room to offer help with any difficulties were necessary and will call the lecturer into the breakout room to clarify any issues that have arisen within it. And the support staff, they always receive any worksheets for the, for the day, any kind of books or Excel sheets and so on that the class is going to be working on and they get that prior to the class so that they're aware of what the, the class is going to work on um, and can offer help where required. But they're also in the class to, to, to help to moderate behaviours and to offer general support where required. And the familiarity of the support workers in the class it adds a degree of normality to the setting online where the students would be used to chatting informally with that person normally when they're in the building. Um, we also use the student support staff during classes if there are students that aren't appearing. And the support staff will try and contact them by phone, by email, by Zoom, whatever, to see if there's any support they can offer to help them to attend. So if it would, I mean, that can be technical issues, it can be personal issues, it can be lots of different stuff. But they're then able to feed back that information to guidance staff about any problems that are being encountered or identified and then to discuss any interventions or actions that may be required. Again, the guidance aspect of stuff. Uh, We've continued to offer guidance on a regular basis um, with our classes for the last few years. Um, and it's our weekly basis where the guidance tutor has the opportunity further to then develop relationships with the class in a more informal and non-curriculum based class or small setting. One-to-one um, -one small group chats kind of allow them to develop a mentoring role and to develop a say between that kind of coaching between the tutor and student and individual issues or difficulties can be addressed in confidence through there to help give the student any support required to attend or to improve in matters. Um, 
if a student's attendance pattern becomes a concern, this is either when we're online or in the building, um, where they're maybe cherry picking at which classes to attend, the guidance tutor will generally contact them, discuss any barriers or concerns which the student has, or if they're facing any barriers and actually aren't being able to attend, trying to find a positive return to class for them. And of course, the multitude of reasons why students don't, don't attend has now got new facts, facets to it when they're online um, involving things like the technology and you know, shared and lack of bandwidth, et cetera, data. Um, however, the role of the guidance tutor and the support staff in re-engaging this crucial and regular and timely intervention really is paramount. And we see the successes of those interventions regularly. One of the teaching um, techniques we've been using and learning techniques is actually having time out for the students. Um, affording the students the opportunity to stay in class online without a lecturer or a support worker there. So had several positive consequences we feel. Um, the students have been taking ownership of their, of their learning, particularly their virtual learning, and they'll discuss content and the structure of the lessons and the timing of the lessons, and they'll often feed back to staff what they have been discussing. They will often go to a separate class and come in and say, we really enjoy doing such and such a thing in that class, can we do it in yours? We get various elements of feedback when that is happening now from them. And the time out is that opportunity for them to develop um, their friendships in a new manner. And um, many of our students, they wouldn't normally interact with their peers after class time. You know, they wouldn't see each other at weekends. However, familiarity with this online technology is encouraging them now to continue using this as a, as, as a vehicle to build friendships after classes and at weekends. Um, a lot of them would go to clubs and so on in the evening or weekends at the moment. That's not been possible for the last year. So this has afforded a new opportunity for them uh, to further develop, I say, and, 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 and it creates this community uh, of, of students, I say. Um, it's built up the friendships and they've got a kind of shared attitude towards their learning now through all of this as well. Loads of our learning and development students, as in other curricular areas for that matter, they, they may have social and communication difficulties and so on. And several have expressed how more confident they are in actually using online communication now, um, where they can engage in as much or as little as they want to. They can engage without being seen or heard. They can just sit and listen, and nobody's going to criticize them for doing that um, or be offended. Um, <laughs> I'm talking a lot, I know here, I'll be getting through this fairly soon. Um, Student-driven curriculum, hugely, hugely important to all of us, I know. Um, it's something that we have concentrated a lot in. And it's as in all courses, the success is greater, of course, when the students have got a hand in the development and delivery of the curriculum. And that's been recognised for a long, long time. So we've encouraged this approach in lots of our classes. And Ronnie will actually, Ronnie will address quite a bit of this when she's talking later as well, in more specific terms. In general terms, we've seen examples such as ICT classes where the students deciding to teach each other by putting together instruction booklets on how to use different programs like PowerPoint and Word, uh, or in the photography class, she's selecting the toys to photograph things in the real suggestions, real situations. These are suggestions that have all come from the students. Other examples which have worked well include suggesting external input uh, for question and answer sessions from employers, inviting SDS employees in to talk about employability studies, etc., along with other external agencies. And that's an area we're keen to develop further as well. That's um, proving popular with the students. Uh, it's a new face and a new topic often for them, something different. Um, and variety is so key to everything we do to stop, uh, you know, to keep the engagement vibrant. The class input, uh, we're absolutely confident that um, the input design by students when incorporated into a class adds an extra dimension to the class. It's something the students enjoy and they develop confidence in, uh, you know, the presenter or the originator of the activity, along with the communication skills and other potential benefits they get. So the student-led activities, they help to strengthen the community again of the class, and they can encourage participation and independent learning skills from others that may be more wallflowers when they see um, others actually involved. I mean, these, these activities tend to be a kind of combination of ones which they either directly meet the requirements of the curriculum, or we also use a lot of less formal ones just now as well, which might simply be to act as a relaxing end to the class. 
Um, we've got one group of students currently, they've got a, a class member and she reads a, a 15 minute excerpt from a Roald Dahl book at the end of each of their communications class. Um, I don't know if the 15 minutes is going to allow her to finish the story right enough before the summer in the time that we've got. Excuse me, that's supposed to be do not disturb. Um, but she works, uh, she works really hard prior to each class to, to, to prepare tricky words and phrases. And it's clear from her delivery and actions while she's reading that, that she fully understands the text and the use of pace and style and humour. Um, and the class, the class all watch the delivery on a full screen. And it always gives a round of applause at the end of the, the, the thing as well. Um, so this has encouraged others to join libraries online so they can download ebooks now. And it's a warm and a relaxing end to the class. It's as an alternative to right away and do your workbooks or your, you know, an oral task now. And the strength of this session is that the reading's live and the reader knows, you know, is known to the listeners. And they recognise how much work is going into each session and enjoyment she gets from it also. So it encourages them. In fact, quite a lot of the classmates have now approached the lecturer with other ideas of their own, which they would like to present to the class uh, as, a, as, a, as an alternative ending to the class, along with things like song light writing. Somebody wants to teach them all the ukulele. Uh, I think you'd have to pass out ukes to everybody to be able to do that when right enough. Um, another highly important aspect, I think, that we have got that's, that, that's contributing to the success of our students for the moment is the parental support we're getting. Um, we found that there's a significant buy-in from the parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, carers, particularly across the level three and four curriculum, which was less expected. Um, with so many parents and so on working from home just now, the opportunity to support the students in that way in, uh, is stronger than in normal times when it may not happen to the same extent. Um, this has resulted in a much greater understanding of what we're actually trying to achieve in learning and development and a greater understanding for that matter of the course content into the bargain. A lot of the time, excuse me, time in the when on campus teaching, you can go from year to year or month to month with never hearing from a parent. Now we have regular interactions with parents actually wanting to know more detail what we're doing and why we're doing it so they can help to support. Um, it strengthened and widened our learning community without a doubt that the, the fact we're teaching online now, the lecturing and support staff regularly receive calls and emails from concerned parents to check that work's being submitted, etc. things that didn't really happen as frequently part prior to this. We've also got partnerships that we work quite well with, that we, well, we work well with remotely and we've worked well with prior to going into lockdown into the bargain. We've got robust partnerships from a range of agencies that support in many ways and stakeholders, including well, SDS, um, schools, employers, social work department, the education department, child support agencies, and Enable Scotland, for instance. Um, these contacts are important when considering entry to the college for the first time via referrals from schools, the progression of students as they, as they go through the different levels of our courses or for that matter, as they progress into employment or other areas of um, mainstream curriculum when they've reached that area. Uh, the, the support that we get from them in social work, et cetera, is invaluable uh, to help the student get through their studies. And it's been invaluable, particularly during lockdown where there have been family issues and there's been um, technology issues where perhaps parental support isn't strong enough to be able to assist with difficulties, for instance, um, the, the, the technology. We've had a fair bit of discussion around the practical elements of actually delivering online. It's important that any teaching materials issued are suitably formatted, for instance, to be used on any platform, including a phone, a tablet, a PC. And of course, should also take into account Android, iOS, Java, other systems that others may use. They need to be emailable or distributable electronically. So file size is important. So as not to use up any of these data allowances or you know, on one piece of work you're sending out for the day. Um, class discipline. It's much easier to manage online in some ways where you can easily mute or eventually exclude somebody from the class if you need to. However, if they're being disruptive or it's not a particular issue we've come across at this point, point. but good practice to be established for discipline and managing of classrooms is as important online as it is in the physical classroom and such and similar um, tenets should be followed. Um, 
several of our students have expressed a, a preference for learning online rather than in a physical space by the nature of the students. They prefer the order and the quiet where they can have fewer distractions than in a classroom where there, there may also be conflicting relationships. And discussions have now started in the department where we're considering a cohort for next year, which may be exclusively taught online. We feel there's potential for this to consist of students from across all three campuses, which can add to a new dynamic to the curriculum and delivery and actually offers a, a new scope in what we do. Um, at this point, I'm going to hand over to Ronnie to talk more about the actual delivery of her courses rather than the, the generalisations that I've been alluding to. Thank you. Thank you, Neil. Um, I'll just bri briefly move through these points. Um, but um, my personal engagement approach involves um, create, sort of creating um, a student-led approach that is really vital, I think, in engaging students. It's been really, really important and really effective. So the, um, the creation of um, positive and meaningful reciprocal relationships across the full team has really paid dividends in terms of engagement. Um, using consultation approaches to try and make sure that you, you're actually working with um, you know, areas that the students are actually interested in has worked really well and lots of flexibility around about um, how the, the students can actually contribute. Um, you know, if you, if you offer them lots of different options, then they're, they're better, there's a better chance they'll find, they'll find a way of working that suits them. Um, and obviously, I'm trying to individualise as much as we possibly can in terms of the students' personal interests. Um, the co-construction of class and um, class direction uh, sorry, class direction and class material has been really, really um, useful and that works hand in hand with the student um, led approach. Um, the, again, the consultations have really helped with that in terms of making sure that the students are involved in building their own curriculum um, and then they'll obviously be more engaged that way. Um, the, the, we, I tend to have planning sessions at the end of each session online to help the students think about what they would like to be involved for the following week. Um, and then I'll give them an email prompt as well, just as, you know, to help them with their memory. So it's, it, it's about them um, feeling, um, feeling excited and, and empowered about their contribution the following week. Um, the, being very flexible again about the way that the work can be sent in while we're online has really proved to be really useful. And I've got a slide about that coming up so I can talk more about that to the slide. Um, having that team approach between the support staff and the lecturer has been vital for me. Um, I'm, I, f I find that the, the input from the support workers has really been, um, it's just been great and it's made it feel like more of a kind of a group, a group approach. Um, and obviously having um, more allocation of time for the students to make sure that they do have the time to do what they need. Sometimes the, the, you know, the parents or carers are, are busy with work or, or with other members of the family, so we can't expect them just to produce work immediately for us. It needs to, it needs to work with the family. Um, also, the accommodations built in for all students from the beginning as an inclusion measure, which benefits all. Um, um, accommodations rarely are, are you know, negative for anybody. Accommodations really just enhance learning opportunities. So if you've got them in there from the beginning, um, you know, sometimes they're not even noticeable, but it just enables different students in different ways. Um, for instance, the, um, the chat feature accommodates non-speakers and, and students with unreliable speech and also offers an alternative communication mode for speakers. So it's just an extra function that's there that's really, really useful. Um, the inclusion of the focus in students' interest really works for neuro neurodivergent students, like you know autistic students and dyslexic students, but it also works across the board. Um, and as I say, they work well across the full student population. Can I have the next slide, please, Neil? Here are some examples of um, interest projects within the essential skills um, class that I've got just now. Um, the, the students have all been allowed to, to work with their own specific um, interests and they're kind of deep diving into those interests week by week with a different theme every week. Um, it's proven to be incredibly successful. Um, there's, um, there's some students with like, unreliable speech who have been really um, excited to talk about um, the, you know, whatever it is they've been interested in. There's one student very interested in Australia, another really interested in tortoises. It's very varied. And there's another student who's um, who loves French, um, that loves the French language and loves France. And he's actually teaching the others at the moment to teach French, to speak French every week. And he's become very empowered through this um, facilitation. So it's been really great. Um, can I have the next slide, please? Um, and it's also important that you know that we have this accommodation in terms of how the work is allowed to come into us. 
through the use of you know digital art, um, photographs of their own personal life and their personal experiences, and the photograph there of the hair being braided. That's a visually impaired student that I've discovered has got a real interest in health and beauty, and she's been working, um, you know, showing us the different hairstyles that she can manage. And she, it's really boosted. It's really boosted her, and it's sort of, um, and she's become much more passionate now in her, in her contributions. Next slide, please. So um, this approach has really made a difference as an, um, an engagement tool. Students are significantly more likely to engage with work which is connected to their own interests. Of course they are, but we're all the same. Um, this approach nurtures motivation and delivers opportunities to improve self-worth and self-esteem. And the approach can be woven through the unit um, as an approach, or it can be individualized you know, with, with students as an approach. You can use it in a, in a multitude of different ways. Uh, next slide, please. And Neil's already mentioned the, the importance of the inclusion of family and carers, but you know, by including families, we are empowering the whole family, family group and specifically empowering the students. We're extending our positive reciprocal relationships and, and that pays dividends, again, as Neil's already mentioned. And then um, you know, to have inclusive guidance has been really useful as well. I mean, I'm, I'm, we are careful with that because there's times when the students should be allowed to just be with you on their own um, and as an independent young person, but there's certainly been times where it's been useful to invite parents in. Just to give an example, when we're looking at next steps and maybe um, applications for the next academic year, that's been really useful. Um, and also this inclusive approach uh, demonstrates the value based on um, you know, the, the support that the students are, are receiving at home and all in all, it just Im improves enga engagement. Can I have the next slide, please? And I think it's important to say, we talk a lot about the challenges of online learning, but it should be acknowledged that attending a class online can reduce learning barriers for many, including the following subgroups of students. Autistic students, students, students experiencing mental health difficulties, disabled students, students involved in crisis situations, students with caring responsibilities, and that's just to name a few. And it's also important to say that these learning barriers don't exist in isolation and can often ebb and flow depending on the individual and the context. Um, Online learning can significantly reduce the demands of college life in certain circumstances and can be an effective accommodation in itself. And this is an important lesson I think we've learned as a whole department um, as we've moved forward. Our student population are engaging wonderfully online and some are really thriving. It's been a joy to see them flourish. I'll hand back to Neil now for his conclusion. Thanks, Ronnie. And I'm very conscious that we're way over time here, so I'll, I'll try and batter through. Um, as we said at the beginning, there's no single item that's determined that attainment or retention um, remaining high across learning and development in all three campuses of the West Scot College Scotland. It's a combination of many factors. Um, the majority of staff that gravitate towards our section have a natural empathy with the students that we work with, and they strive to encourage an atmosphere of mutual respect and commitment. And staff and students, they take ownership of their learning and teaching. The teaching staff identify and embrace opportunities and they take a creative approach to challenges. This has never been seen so strongly as with, with the way we've all accepted and adapted to change since last March when the learning and the use of new technologies was greatly accelerated beyond anybody's imagination. Um, learning new texts encouraged many, of course, not just in our section for that matter, to recognise strengths and opportunities of delivering online courses. And we look forward to developing a curriculum that takes advantage of what we've learned over the last few months. Members of staff crossing between different course teams and campuses encourages robust communications and it helps to foster new ideas and methods which can help develop a strong feeling of being belonging for part-time members of staff, particularly where their contribution is highly valued. The staff commitment to learn and adapt and to adopt a new constructive approach it reflects positively on the students. Many of our students come with social, emotional and behavioural difficulties and they'll often have disengaged with the education system and they lack aspirations for their future. Our staff have expectations and aspirations for all of our students and we strive to help the students develop their own aspirations along the, with the core values that we hold as a department. Certainly a strong measurable factor amongst all others though is our ability to work closely and monitor students' progress regularly through the guidance tutors and the role of the student support staff in learning and development. A strong emphasis is placed upon personal development, which carries through all areas of curriculum and weekly monitoring of attendance and progress allows for timely intervention when required. 
and our department started discussions with other curricular areas now to pilot partnership activity where our learner development staff will work with level four students from other areas to deliver personal development and associated guidance in attempt to try to improve attention, retention and attainment in those other areas. Um, we were due to start this on last March uh, and had weren't able to obviously, um, but we've just recently begun this discussion again in identifying areas where we can work in partnership. Um, finally, the, the, the the strong sense of community fostered in learner development on each campus, it helps students to feel safe and respected, and they all come to college ready, prepared, and wanting to learn every day. And that, in conclusion, is what we've come up with. So thank you very much from both Ronnie and me for listening. I hope, uh, I say, I hope we haven't been teaching our grannies to suck eggs the whole way through. <laughs> Falls to me to thank uh, Neil and Ronnie for that uh, really packed and, and useful contribution. And I think it, we would want to reflect on two things. Uh, the first is that the lessons learned from the remote learning experience, I think, will have an impact not only on what we do short term, but what we do once things return uh, to closer to what we used to call normal. Uh, and I think the second point is, uh, do try and look at the other videos that are on Virtual uh, Bridge that cover engagement to get different and other approaches and other ideas because the, the wide range of experience and success uh, that's demonstrated in Virtual Bridge uh, will be helpful professional development to everybody. So Neil and Ronnie uh, from West College Scotland, thank you for your contribution and that will close the video. <laughs>